The sixth edition of the UAE Tour. A sprint roster like no other. Over seven days of racing, two climbs along the way. The rest of those days, certainly about the fast men. Well, the world's very best are here. They describe this as a tour, which is effectively the World Championships of Sprinters. They roll out today, long distance destination Liwa, 141 kilometers in total. And with the wind blowing as a north-northwesterly, it was a tailwind start. Well, an easy pace, you might think, through the desert, but that wind was blowing at 27 kilometers per hour. And as a result, it was quite pacey. 47 kilometers per hour for the first hour of racing, a couple of intermediate sprints along the way, proving to be most important for the bonus seconds therein. Two riders went up the road, both from Team Corotec Vini Fantini, Marco Morgano and Mark Stewart. Renowned, of course, as part of our Track Champions League, he also up here, the Scot. Well, a pair of them posted a, a gap around about the three-minute mark. It hovered there while the peloton just pleased itself in the dunes on some dedicated cycling roads in this part of the world, where if you fancy some winter training yourself, you could come along and just enjoy life on two wheels. Well, the wind was picking up, putting a little bit of dust out there as well. And when we got to our second and final intermediate sprint, Mark Stewart had a duty of riding on to take the black jersey. Others thought about the possibility of adding to their tally overall. By the time it comes to calculating at the end of the day, smart riders were gaining those bonus seconds. The rest were thinking about the end of the day. The end of the day couldn't come soon enough, especially for those who suffered a few bumps and bruises. There were touches of wheels as the peloton was quite tightly packed together. And then as we came to our run for home, a slight wavering of the road, a little bit of altitude gain, nothing too serious. And then a little bit of a feeling of a ramp finish towards the end. Well, so many wanted to open their account with success. Unfortunately, touches of wheels are bedeviling us here, it seems. They kept it clean at this point, but as soon as the compressions of the roundabouts had their toll, then I'm afraid it was to be a, a little bit of a rough ending to the day for some. Well, the best sprinters keep their eyes on doors that can open. And as chains were thrown out there and other riders were getting themselves into trouble, Melia was away. Gaviria was out front. Melia still screened at this point, but he's on such amazing form. When he came through to the line at the very end, he owned the day. And the rest of a high-quality sprinting field as well. Super effort by him. And a great result for Sudo Quickstep. Opening his account and theirs, he'll be in the leader's red jersey as we head for the time trial tomorrow on stage two. Well, the way that he actually just et into this deficit was absolutely outstanding. As Gaviria just heading off. Meanwhile, suddenly hoving into view was this man, an absolute rocket ship. Through he came, rounding Milano, who's also looking very brave. Arvid Decline getting himself a very good finish for Tudor Pro Cycling. But really, one man in control, double beating his breast, and you could understand why. When you look at the roster of riders who have come along to this race, Tim Belia has got first bragging rights, and one feels it may well not be his last. Well, for others, I'm afraid the journey home begins right here. Some rough stuff, not least for Harold Tejeda here being given a lift. He's OK, he'll be riding on. Mark Cavendish squeezed out of position today. Well, we have some issues, I'm sure, to sort out. On stage three, before then, we've got a time trial, and Timberlear will be in the red skin suit for that. Just 12.1 kilometres awaits. Right now, he can just celebrate a job well done. Timberlear is in charge of this race, certainly in charge of the sprint today, and it may well be a story we repeat throughout the seven stages that we have. So, stage two, 12.1 kilometres. And reasonably technical, I have to say. Some rises and falls as well. And as a result, it could appeal to a wider group than just the pure time trialists out there. Let's see if some classics men have their fun as well. Stage two then of the UAE Tour already upon us. 
as you can see, not an absolutely pan flat stage to deal with, but the deserts is beckoning. And we'll have some high ground to play with Jabal Jace and Jabal Hafit still to come. <laughs> <laughs> 